This is a review of the groundbreaking and controversial Nikon F4, a camera that's brought autofocus and program mode to their professional program line. I'm going to go over every control on the camera and everything in the viewfinder, then talk about the camera and its significance. We're going to start off on the top plate right side where you're going to find more controls than most cameras have on their entire bodies. Up first is a shutter release and around that the Film Advanced Mode Selector with settings for Lock, Single Shot, Continuous High, Continuous Low, Continuous Silent, and Timer. Continuous High is a whopping 5.7 frames per second. Low is 1 frame per second, and Continuous Silent is a setting you would use in low noise situations. The Timer setting gives you a 10 second delay before firing the shutter. To the side is a lock that must be depressed before you can change any of the settings. Continuing in a clockwise direction, you see the frame counter window, the multiple exposure lever, and the exposure compensation dial, which has settings from negative 2 to positive 2 in one third stops and a lock. Around that, you have the exposure mode selector with settings for manual, aperture priority, shutter priority, program, and program high. And continuing around the bottom, you see the first of two levers used to rewind the film and its lockout. Next up you have the shutter speed dial with settings from 4 seconds to an incredible 1 8 thousandths of a second. Other positions are B for bulb, T for time, and X for flash synchronization. Bulb setting keeps the shutter open as long as your finger is depressing the button. Time is open until the dial is changed to another setting and X will fire the flash after setting the shutter speed to 1 to 150th of a second. At the center of the dial is a lock that needs to be depressed to get out of the X position. Finally, you have the viewfinder illumination switch. By my count, that's 13 controls on the top plate right side of this camera. Tilt the camera a bit to see the F4 standard viewfinder, the DP20. It contains three controls, the diopter adjust knob, the metering system selector, and the compensation value scale window. Meters available on the DP20 include a spot meter, a matrix meter, and a center weighted meter. Moving to the top plate left side, you see the manual film rewind lever, the camera back release lock, the shutter speed dial and lock, the finder release lever, and the alert LED. And on top of the viewfinder is Nikon's awesome TTL hot shoe. Moving to the front plate right side, top to bottom, you have the mirror lockup lever, the depth of field preview button, the autofocus lock button, the auto exposure lock button, and around the autofocus lock is a lever that locks the autofocus and auto exposure together. On top of the hand grip is the self timer LED. Looking at the front plate left side, top to bottom, you see the flash synchronization terminal, the meter coupling lever, the meter coupling lever release button, the lens release button, and finally the focusing mode selector with settings for continuous servo, single servo, and manual. On the back plate you find the second film release and lock, the remote shutter release, the battery check button and LEDs, and the lock screw. And on the DP20 finder there's an IP shutter lever. Turn the camera over to see the vertical shutter release and lock, the grip release lever, the tripod socket, and the remote terminal. The view in the viewfinder changes based on what shooting mode you're in. On the bottom right you see a P if you're in program mode, an A for aperture priority, and an S for shutter priority. And for manual mode you see the meter. To use the program mode you put the exposure mode selector in one of the program settings and set the aperture to the highest numbered setting. In the viewfinder across the bottom left to right the camera shows you the metering mode, the shutter speed, the aperture, and the program mode. For aperture priority, set the exposure mode selector to A. In the viewfinder across the bottom left to right, you see the meter mode, the shutter speed, and the A indicating aperture mode. Top center, you see the aperture you have set on the lens. To use shutter priority, set the exposure mode selector to the S and the aperture to the highest numbered setting. In the viewfinder across the bottom left to right, you see the metering mode, the shutter speed set on the dial, the aperture the camera is picking for you, and the S indicating shutter mode. For manual mode, set the exposure mode selector to M. In this mode, you set both the aperture and the shutter speed, and the view inside, bottom left to right, you see the meter mode, the shutter speed set on the dial, the light meter, and top center, the aperture you set. The LCDs across the top, left to right, you see the exposure compensation setting LCD, in this case showing positive 2.0 overexposure, the frame counter LCD, the aperture window already mentioned in this review, 
the focus indicator, and finally the exposure compensation indicator. When this camera came out, it was a technological tour de force. Yes, it had all the expected things that a professional camera should have, like solid construction, you know, solid metal body. It had interchangeable focusing screens and viewfinders, and it had all the flashes and all the accessories you'd expect from a pro-level camera. But it also introduced the world to autofocus and matrix metering. It also had two program modes, a shutter priority mode, mirror lockup. One thing it was missing, actually, is the frame advance lever. This is the first time a professional level Nikon camera did not have that. It's got the integrated motor drive and it's got a silent mode on the motor drive. So if you're in a situation that requires, you know, quiet, then you put it in that. Another interesting thing about the camera is it does have a manual rewind lever which you can use instead of the motor drive because there is no silent motor drive rewind. You know, this being a professional camera, it's very important that you don't accidentally bump a setting when you're pulling it out of your bag. To ensure this, the camera's got eight locks on it. It's got four locks on the top right alone, three more on this side, and then it's got a lock for the vertical shutter release. It's got a tab that you move out of the way so that you can use Nikon lenses going back to like 1969. It was designed by a fellow named Giorgetto Giugiario. I think that's how you pronounce it. He was an international design artist. He designed the DeLorean and pasta. It was produced from 88 to 97 and was intended to replace the Nikon F3, but the F3 was produced before, during, and for many years after the production of the F4. Interestingly, you can buy F4s for less money than F3s on Craigslist and eBay currently. I'm not really sure why that is, because functionally, this is so much better, in, in my mind, than the F3. All right, let me explain. Here are some of the specs that I care about on both cameras to make my case for why the F4 is better than the F3, because I know it's going to be controversial. So I'm going to go over the flash sync. I'm going to talk about the shutter speeds, the max shutter speed, the meters, the shooting modes, and lastly, the design. Okay, so as far as flash syncs goes, the max flash sync on the F3 is 1 80th of a second if you put it on X and 1 60th if you use the dial, the shutter speed dial. On the F4, the max flash sync speed is 1 250th of a second. That's huge. The max shutter speed on the F3 is 1 2,000th of a second, and on the F4, it's 1 8,000th of a second. So again, advantage F4. Let's talk about the meters. The F3 has a center-weighted meter. The F4 has, yes, a center-weighted meter, but it also has a spot meter, and it has a matrix meter. And the matrix meter was a huge deal when it was introduced on this camera to the Pro line. Uh, now it's on every camera. Let's talk about shooting modes. The F3 introduced the Nikon Pro line to aperture priority, which is the way I, I shoot all my cameras that have aperture priority. Uh, and honestly, that was a big deal. But the F4 has uh, that, so both of them have uh, manual mode and aperture priority. The F4 then added shutter priority and two program modes, which was interesting because it's a pro-level camera, so most pros are not going to put it in program mode, but whatever. Lastly, let's talk about the design of the camera. Both cameras were designed by Giorgetto Giugiario, I think that's how it's pronounced again. And uh, they're beautiful. Both of them are. The F3 is is gorgeous camera. But then when you look at the F4, I just think it's that much better. It's, it's just amazing. So on top of all those things for the F, in the F4's advantage, the F4 then also has autofocus. And it's got a built-in motor drive. So on the F3, you'd have to buy one of the many motor drives available. And the F4 has got a hot shoe on top of the DP20. On the F3, you got to buy a weird adapter thing to mount the a flash on top of the camera if you wanted to do that. So I used an F3 HP in college at the newspaper. 
And it was definitely one of those situations where you don't want to meet your heroes. Because I was disappointed. So, okay, in its defense, I was using it alongside an 8008, which is like a baby F4. So all the specs that I just mentioned for the F4 are on the, F, uh, the 8008. So it was kind of like going back to the Stone Ages with the F3. Uh, not really Stone Ages, but it was, it was definitely a step backwards. The biggest thing is like the flash synchronization, right? If you're trying to do uh, fill-in flash uh, on, like you're taking pictures outside and you want to fill in like uh, shadows, it's really easy. It's easier the higher your flash sync speed is. I know my opinion about the F4 being better than the F3 is in the minority. So if you have a strong opinion the other way, leave a comment down below with examples. Also, if you'd like to see a review of my Nikon 8008, which is a baby F4, I will leave a link at the end of this video. You can make the camera smaller by removing this bottom piece and replacing uh, the hand grip. I'll show you how now. So what you do is you pull this guy out and release it. And you turn this lever Then, you're, then you've got this. Then you've got this other hand grip with the four batteries in it. So you put this on, and then you turn this. So now you've got kind of like a new, new camera. It's much smaller, smaller form factor. And I really should be, I should shoot it this way a lot more because unless you need 5.7 frames per second, this is way more friendly to the weight wise you know so it's just got the four double a batteries in it that other one adds four more across the bottom and a lot of weight to the camera which is already heavy when the camera came out in 1988 it was like fourteen hundred dollars way out of the price range for a college student but i read all the reviews and this was the camera that i dreamed of i ended up buying uh and using you know affordable cameras and loved them and so about 10 years ago I noticed that these cameras were on Craigslist and eBay for around two to three hundred dollars which is actually less than the Nikon F3 so I picked up this one I, I talk about a lot of my other cameras in the collection being one of my favorites this is my favorite camera it's just beautiful to look at it's awesome to hold it fits in the hand perfectly uh, if I were to nitpick one thing about it it's heavy it's very heavy camera. Heaviest by far of all my cameras, especially with the extra battery pack across the bottom. You know, eight AA batteries. It's huge. But it's just beautiful. I mean, look at all the dials. It's, it, it's got tons of dials and levers and buttons. And uh, to use the camera, it's just awesome. You see everything you need to see in the viewfinder. It's super easy to get get the picture. It's got everything that a camera should have on it, obviously, because it's a professional level camera. And um, yeah, it's just a great camera. I recommend it. Uh, I recommend picking one up for yourself off eBay or Craigslist. You won't regret it. Thanks for watching my video. And if you liked it, hit the like button and think about subscribing so you can catch more of my camera reviews. Thanks again. If I were to try and find some things that, uh, that I want to nitpick on the camera is, you know, it's, it's heavy as all get out. I used to have incredible posture and I took this camera and walked around Chicago for three days and it came back and now look at me. It's just, it's sad really. But I mean, honestly, if you were to try and think of other things that are as heavy as this camera is, I mean, you know, if you just look at it, you know, other things from 1988 that weigh as much as this.